It is Monday, March 18th, and I'm recording this in after hours trading on Robinhood, so the screen is going to be white. It's a little bit of a change. <clears throat> this is the video log that takes my 30,000 to a million, and hopefully you're doing the same. I don't understand why you'd be doing anything else. I uh, want to just do a quick overview of the account. It is at another, although very slight, all-time high again. And we're going to discuss a um, money-making strategy that you can employ that's, I think, fairly rewarding but difficult to execute mentally, as are all strategies, really. So let's go into it here. You can see that my account is sitting at 400, I'm sorry, 53,476. And that it is red, but it's actually higher than it was over the weekend. The reason it's red is because in pre-hours, the account gets bumped up, and so it, it shows it as a red activity, but it's actually up $150 since last time I made a video. So we are sitting at an all-time closing high and an all-time intraday high as well. Uh, the biggest reason was Apple, which was up over a percent today. Basically, everything else was down. The, the, um, market itself was up about 0.36% and I did not manage to get a bigger gain in the market. I was of about 0.2, which is, I'm not happy about that, but we can't win them every single day. At least I'm not down big. The precious metals were down. Spotify is down. <clears throat> I reduced my um, market share of the Russian market. I'll talk about that why in a little bit. And also, Uranium was also down. So it was a very mixed day. Okay, so what happened here? There was a big event today. The big event is that I deleveraged my account. All right, so I'm just going to start talking about it. There's nothing interesting that happened really in my portfolio besides my actions that are conforming with the strategy here. So the strategy is leveraging and deleveraging. We talked about a few episodes ago of going net long versus net short. Well, this is another way that you can, well, leverage your um, bull and bear strategy in the markets. So what I had done when the market was low, let's go back in, in time. So we're going to go back about, you know, a year. So what I have done here when the market was falling last December, I increased my leverage, right? So I borrowed money basically in order to go long on some stocks like silver and Apple and whatnot. And so the move out of it was very aggressive. So if you look at the old time chart, it looks extremely aggressive, yeah? So we went from 41,000 and we're sitting at 53,400 right now. And now I'm deleveraging because we've had this big move. And so I'm putting that money back. Okay, I'm unborrowing it. I'm paying the money back in a way. Although that's not exactly how the Robin Hood leveraging system works. But uh, I'm deleveraging. So I don't want to have to pay that monthly fee of $100, $125 a month for, for using their extra cash. Or it would mean, you know, if you're using a regular means of leverage, you'd be paying interest, in, uh, interest on money that you've borrowed. And even Robinhood's leveraging methods have that percentage ingrained in them on amounts over 50000 i actually show you on my phone. Hold on a sec. Over 50000 Okay, here's the phone. <clears throat> it charges interest of over let's go to the full cam here it charges interest of five percent over um if you want to borrow more than fifty thousand dollars so these are the uh gold tiers that are available to me right now and i don't know if you can see maybe not all right, there we go. So I have I downgraded down to the $2,000 tier, which is, you know, $10 per month. And then we have 25,420. I had the 30,000, which is not available to me right now since my account is over $50,000, but 
I have 25,000 available for 120 a month and then 50 and up for $200 a month for $50,000 and it says on the bottom if you can read the fine text over 50,000 it's fixed at 5% interest rate right so that's how normally you borrow money right you pay interest on the on the borrowed money and so I've deleveraged that and I will go very aggressive if we have another big down correction so normally, you know, people say, right, it's, it's the equivalent of buying the dip. And that strategy has worked extremely well for people in the last 10 years. So <laughs> we don't know if it'll, if it'll, it'll keep working very well. But and what kind of dip are you buying? I mean, you're basically catching it's called, you know, catching falling knives in the investing business here. But that's how most of the big wealth is made. All right, so traders, they like to have big instant rewards and short trade uh, very identifiable setups. But when you're managing money, like that's too risky. So I want to do more of a money managing style rather than um, something that brings me a ton of, you know, money very quickly, but it's very, very extremely risky and can I can lose all of it. I want to keep all my gains. So I will go aggressive. I will take big risks, but there, I want them to be calculated and I want them to be managed from a risk management perspective. So that style is a little bit, not only have I not studied it enough, you know, I'm not confident in employing it, but it has inherent risk that isn't there when, when you're managing versus when you're growing versus you know, putting everything on the line and basically betting and competing against other traders out there in the market. So it's a bit different. All right, now back to the browser here. Press minus down. Okay, so what did I do to the leverage? I just sold off a bunch of stuff, right? So, um, why well, this is just purchasing two shares of main, but I'll show you in the history. I could I try to put on a Spotify trade again this Monday, but it just wouldn't fill. So that's what's showing up over here. Um, so we have Pro Shares market sell. So I sold a bunch of market shares, but then I rebought a little bit of it. Um, so I got two thousand dollars from there. I sold the Russian market half of what I own and the other half is probably going to sh get sold as well because I've sold the call against it and it's reached that limit at $21. So I sold 100 shares here and so that's $2,000 from there and then um, a little bit of emerging markets um, bonds and then the big one is the short term treasuries right so that's $22,000 from there and I also sold the utilities that I had bought that I thought might track the market up. And I got like, you know, 40, 50 bucks off of that trade, which is which is fine. And then you can see how my downgrade to Robinhood Gold 2000, I got charged a dollar 67 here. And then I'll be charged $10 every month um, starting next month. Okay, so now I only have two thousand dollars of debt that I work that I'm working with. That's it, not not thirty like I was just a minute, ago, just you know, half an hour ago, or an hour ago. Uh, but that's totally fine. So whenever I think that things are overheating, and right now it looks like the S and P is bumping off of some resistance, and it might correct downwards. It's bumped off of this resistance like five times in the past. And we'll see. Let's go to the SPY actually. Maybe we can identify it on this chart in Robinhood. Um, so this resistance here, you know, what 281 in November 7. And then we had 279 in December 3rd, roughly. And now we're sitting at 282, which is above this level. But it's still close enough to where it could cause trouble. So we don't know. I mean, it looks like Apple has been really strong and all the alpha leading stocks have been really, really strong. So I don't know if they'll, they'll actually give in because they have their own little levels they have to reach. So if we go to Apple, so we probably, we might break up on the upside, but 
you know the correction still real at some point so I do want to deleverage if we go to Apple you'll see that on the one year chart it's still yet to reach all of these resistance levels right like its all-time high was around two hundred and thirty two dollars so we've got a long way before we get in it. it's been acting extremely strong as of late and I still have those hundred shares which I'm very thankful that I didn't sell them and I didn't sell calls against them because I might not have I might not have them right now all right and, and it's been a, the biggest source of my gains actually um, if we click on it you'll see that it's up two hundred dollars today and three thousand one hundred eighty five dollars overall not to mention all the options I've sold with it so that's additional layer of profit as well it doesn't show up here but it's a apple is a big reason you know i probably could tribute like 50 percent of the gain in that um december 24th moment so what we talked about is review the portfolio and i shared another leveraging strategy which is <laughs> leverage um, that you can employ when you think things are turning bullish and now that you that I'm seeing things are getting a little bit overheated and even though I think they'll probably even be even more overheated because the big stocks haven't reached the levels that they need to reach um, I still think that at this point I don't need to be borrowing thirty thousand dollars to sh to trade right and things are not in such a dire situation and the way I trade it's it, this doesn't make sense for me to keep it so I decided to deleverage, and I will leverage up again if things drop. But as, but as things stand right now, I can't. I don't see a way to employ it. That big trade that I was thinking about doing, where I go long in one company in an industry and go short at the other, I can't identify it, and so I'm gonna skip on it for now. And I'm just gonna do smaller option trades in the meantime. To generate a little bit of side cash while I wait for a bigger opportunity in the market which I'm just not seeing right now so I'll, many other people can be seeing opportunities and I'm sure they're making a lot of money but for from what I do and from what I see I just don't see anything for me at the moment so I'm just gonna be in a little bit of a standby and just uh, waiting for apparently Apple to give me a bunch of gains and also waiting for that silver leg up that doesn't seem to be happening at the moment um, I'm gonna wait for probably another month until I sell off EXK and have zero EXK in the position wheat and precious metals already getting reduced because it's 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 reaching its uh, call level call sell level so I'm, that's gonna be reduced as well wheat and precious metals and so I'm gonna have very very little precious metals in my portfolio coming up so in the in the next month I mean I don't know this prediction hasn't worked out um, we did ha see a really big boost right coming out of December and January and that was great and I meant some made quite a bit of money there but I really thought that they would have another leg up and it just hasn't happened and I keep waiting for it and I'll wait for it maybe for another month and I may have to sell EXK let's see actually what it what it's at right now so two dollars fifty seven, which is fine. I mean I won't be losing money if I sell it at this level, but I was hoping for a lot more. I wanna get rid of this two thousand five hundred dollars um when the level you know, when it reaches like three thousand, three thousand five hundred. I was expecting this to be over three dollars by now, but it hasn't. Uh thankfully I have been reducing the position as I've showed you in other videos here. You can see that I've been selling off 2,200 shares, excuse me, regularly here at $2.46, at 258, at 260, 264, 268, and 272. And now it's sitting at 257. So if it drops from here, I've sold enough shares, but still, I was expecting this to be a bigger money generator for me. Um, anyway. That's enough. I think I'm rambling on it right now. So those are the trades. And we talked about the um, leveraging strategy. 
and how you want to leverage up when you're more con when you have more conviction and then do leverage when you have less conviction i definitely have less conviction right now so i am trying to move according to um my trade philosophy and methods all right that's it for now catch you all tomorrow hopefully if i if i have time to make the video and that's it peace out